and we need to have two multiplication and four addition again is because the first multiplication is here which you can obtain it exactly the same thing as in here so you don't have to count it twice so that is the first multiplication the second multiplication involved with w0 time f of 3 in equation 11b which is the same thing as w0 time f of 3 in equation 11d that's why you need two multiplication and we need four addition because you need one addition in here in equation 11a you get the second addition required for equation 11b you get the third addition or subtraction based on equation 11c and you got the last addition or subtraction based on equation 11d so totally you need two multiplication and four addition now after we calculate the inner product already then the next thing we can calculate the outer product which is this vector f2 right here this vector f2 shown in equation 12 in case you don't know where this equation come from I can refer you back to the earlier slide so that you can see okay as you can see based on the earlier slide the computation of this inner product we already just computed and together we call it a vector f1 vector f1 that have four components f10 f11 f12 f13 okay and now we just have to multiply the outer matrix here with the vector f1 and the result of that we call it the vector f2 that vector f2 should be essentially giving you the answer for this vector c tilde okay so if you take the first matrix shown in equation 9 multiply with the intermediate vector f1 that we just calculated then we will get the vector f2 which is the same thing as the vector c tilde so that is exactly what i sh show you earlier here you see so if you take the first coefficient matrix which is this guy you multiply with the intermediate vector f1 then you get the vector f2 and that vector f2 is the same thing as vector c tilde like i told you earlier the only thing different you have to be careful is after you obtain the vector f2 by performing the matrix time vector shown in equation 12 the order is slightly different because vector f2 what you got is the subscript is zero subscript is one subscript two subscript three but the corresponding to that for the vector c tilde you have a subscript 0, subscript 2, subscript 1, subscript 3. So we have to do some rearrangement of the vector F2 in order to get the corresponding proper answer for the unknown vector C tilde. But for the time being, let us try to focus on how to compute the vector F2 simply by looking at the matrix time vector shown in equation 12 now obviously we just do the same thing like before to calculate f2 of 0 we just take the first row of the matrix and then time this vector f1 and then to calculate the f2 of 1 you just take the second row of the matrix time the vector f1 and similarly we can calculate f2 of 2 and f2 of 3 and the detail will be shown in the next slide here it is so as you can see we calculate f2 0 f2 1 f2 2 and f2 3 now the computation of f2 of 0 is straightforward by this formula equation 13a and that is exactly corresponding to the first part of the previous uh, matrix equation 
the second equation, say F2 of 1 is equal to F1 of 0 plus F2 plus a W raised to the power 2 times F1, 1. However, just like what I said to you before, we can prove using the same way that W raised to the power 2 is the same thing as negative of W raised to the power 0. So by that observation, you can see the advantage is that the computation of F2, 0 and the computation of F2, 1 can be done with only one multiplication here. That multiplication of W0 times F11 is exactly happening here, so we don't have to count that, you don't have to do that multiplication again. So, so far, equation 13A and 13B only require one multiplication and two addition, one in here and the other one in here. Similarly, the computation of F22 is given by equation 13C and computation of F23 is shown as F12 plus W raised to the power 3 times F13. Again, we can prove to you, we can prove that W raised to the power 3 is the same thing as negative of W raised to the power 1. That proof can be done by remember the definition of W and by making use of the Euler identity, as I said several times already. So, again, when we compute F22 based on equation 13C and we compute F23 based on equation 13D, all we have is one multiplication for W1 times F13. That product, again, is exactly appear in equation 13D. So, so far we have only one multiplication. And we have one addition in equation 13C and another addition or subtraction at equation 13D. So, to summarize it, to calculate equation 13A, 13B, 13C, and 13D, you only have two multiplication. One happen in equation 13A, the other one happen in equation uh, 13D, for example. And we have four addition, which is one in here, equation 13A, another one is a subtraction happen in here, that's the second one. The third addition happen in equation 13C, and the last one is the subtraction happen in equation 13D. So, totally, to calculate the equation 13A, B, C, and D, we need to have two multiplication and four addition. That is exactly what I said, you see? The computation requires two complex multiplication and four complex addition. So, to summarize it, in order to do the inner product, we require to have two multiplication and four addition. To compute the outer product, we require again the same two multiplication and four addition. And therefore, when you add up the total operation involved for both inner and outer product, we will have four multiplication and eight addition. That corresponding to the situation when we say we have n is equal to 2 raised to the power 2, uh, raised to the power r, and uh, let's say 2 raised to the power 2 equal to 4. When you have four data points, then you have four multiplication and eight addition to, in order to obtain the unknown vector C tutor. Well, in general, what happens if you have the data point is equal to n, 
n could be 4, could be 16, could be some other number. Well, in that case, then, the number of mul multiplication involved will be n time r over 2. And please remember, r represent the power of 2. And 2 raised to the power r, by definition, is equal to n. Okay? So, in this particular example, r is equal to 2. So that means, for the general case, you have n data point. The number of multiplication involved will be 4 times r, which is 2, divided by 2, which is 4 multiplication. And the number of addition involved will be n times r. And if we apply for this specific case, n capital N is equal to 4, r is equal to 2, so you have 8 addition in this case. All right. Now, what does that mean? What it means is that if you want to compute equ equation 7, you need to have n square operation. Okay? We need to have based on equation 7 based on equation 7. If you have equation 7, you do it in a conventional way. The number of multiplication involved will be n square. And based on the new way that we do it, by splitting into the inner product and the outer product computation, the number of multiplication involved will be nr over 2. So the ratio between these two ways will be 2n divided by r. So suppose you have a bigger sample data point. Let's say n is equal to 2048. And by the way, 2048 is the same thing as 2 raised to the power 11. So that means in this case, r is equal to 11. So if we substitute this kind of a data into equation 14, then the ratio is equal to 2, according to the formula, equation 14, time n, which is 2048, divided by r, which is 11, and that ratio turned out to be equal to 372.36. And what it means is that if you do the calculation according to the new way that we just presented to you, by doing the inner product and then by doing the outer product and making use of the property of w, the calculation here will be 372 times faster than the conventional way, based on equation 7. In case you forgot what is equation 7 look like, we can go back to the first slides of this lecture so that I can show you. You see, equation 7 is the red equation that I mentioned to you earlier. So you can see Based on equation 7, in order to calculate the unknown vector C tilde, you have to do a matrix coefficient times the vector F. And that will require n square multiplication. Whereas if you do the computation of the vector C tilde, as shown in equation 9, the total multiplication will be only n times r over 2. So, let's see, go back to my previous slide. So, that re re uh, remind you about the equation 7 over there. So, it clearly shows that the computation can be much, much faster, 372 times faster, if we do according to the inner and outer product operation. Okay, so, let us try to summarize the way we did the op